Hey, welcome back. I'm Keith Barry. I'm Mike Monticello. And I'm Jake Fisher. And this is Talking Cars. We're going to be talking about um, a car that we rented from Ford. Less about the car, more about a really interesting feature that's that's on it that's going to be on a lot more Fords uh, going forward, which we just actually heard it, uh, from some news out of CES from Il- Intel and, and Ford this week that the system called Blue Cruise. Uh, it's an active driving assistance feature. It's kind of similar to Tesla's autopilot, kind of similar to uh, GM Super Cruise. And we got to try it. We got to try it on a 22 Ford Mach-E GT, um, which uh, we rented from Ford. But we're also going to be getting it on our own um, Mach-E, which we own uh, as an over-the-air update. So we'll be able to do even more tests. But it's an important enough debut that, that we wanted to spend some time talking about it. Because these systems, these active driving assistance systems, they they can they can control some steering. They can control braking. They can control control acceleration. These are really becoming common across various vehicles. And with them, so are um, driver monitoring systems. So Jake, maybe you can, you're the expert in this. Can you kind of talk us through Blue Cruise? It's watching us. It's driving for us. What's it, what's, what's it, what is, what is it doing? Well, this is, this is, this is the problem, right? These are the most misunderstood systems. Like there are, there can be, right? I mean, people understand what their headlights do and even automatic emergency braking. We get it. Well, it automatically brakes in emergency situations. We get that. <laughs> these are the most misunderstood systems totally. And these are, I mean, you, you explained it right. You know, these systems can do some steering and speed control and all this stuff at the same time. But what's the point? Um, there, w- there was a, a, a terrific Jalopnik article where they talked about, like, what's the point of this? And it's almost like having someone wash the dishes and you're standing behind to make sure that they wash the dishes right. And if they do it wrong, you have to take over really quick. I mean, that's kind of the situation. It's not a self-driving car. Y- you have to pay attention and take over if you need it. My favorite example is Chuck Green, who works at MIT now, but who worked on Super Cruise, describes it as you're no longer stacking shelves at the grocery store. You're the manager of the guy who stacks shelves at the grocery (laughs) store. And I just, I love that. Yes. I love that. Yes. You are responsible. You are still the driver. You, the person behind the wheel, are still the driver, still responsible for everything that's going on. But you're overseeing something that's, Doing some of the controls, the steering, the the speed control. Now, um, now this Ford Blue Cruise system is really kind of interesting because I think there's kind of a fork in the road here. And when you use, I mean, look, there's marketing and how they advertise it, and they talk about it as is the another hands-free system, which makes yeah. you think like, oh, it's driving. Yeah, the for ads me, are right? everywhere. They say hands-free driving, hands-free driving from Ford. Right. So, I mean, the problem is, is that. When you use this system, it is not really going towards autonomous driving. This is a system that, for the most part, you need to have your hands on the wheel. There's only a few sections. You know, there's certain areas. If it's a straight road on a on a divided highway, that you could t- you can take your hands off the wheel. But you don't need to. Um, it actually kind of helps you center in the road and makes driving more stress free. But you do have to pay attention, even if your hands are on the wheel. Um, so it's more of a, a driving assistance system. They really must have to drive to really understand, you know, what is good for it. And what is good for are things like the, the parts of driving I don't want to drive, you know, the really long, boring sections on that four hour trip or the stop and go traffic. These are, syst- you know, where it really helps. Now, we've actually driven this. Uh, we've all three of us have spent some time behind the wheels. So I think that there's some there's some there's some opportunities to, to kind of share what we saw. So, Monty, you've you've driven cars with all of these systems, uh, but you've. You, you, you spent some time, you, you figured out Blue Cruise, so to speak. What uh, <laughs> what, what what'd you think? Yeah, I don't know if I figured it out. But so I, <laughs> I actually drove it on two different occasions. And and that was actually very enlightening. Uh, I, I did the driving yesterday for uh, the B-roll that you'll probably be seeing in the background. And um, I think it's all about expectations, right? If you go into yeah. this, Jake talked about the marketing. Ford calls it that says this feature allows a driver to operate truly hands free on pre qualified sections of divided highways called hands free blue zones, right? So it's expectations, Ford's marketing. Also, the name, it's called Blue Cruise. Well, what does that sound like? It sounds like Super Cruise. And what is Super Cruise? We know Super Cruise is GM's hands free highway driving system, right? So I think when you go into it with that expectation, which I did, 
Um, I thought it was going to act a little different than it did, which is that there was more times when it said to me, keep hands on steering wheel than I was expecting, to be totally honest with you. But the reason why I'm so glad I drove it the second day was because I drove it on the same highway, but a completely different stretch of highway. So the first time I drove it, I drove it on a section of highway that had a fair amount of curvy sections. And so every once in a while, it would tell me, uh, keep hands on steering wheel. But I didn't actually know why. And that's one of my sort of issues mm -hmm. with it. I wish it would say, keep hands on steering wheel, sharp curves ahead. But it just tells you this, and you're not sure why it's telling you that. And again, I'm expecting I can pretty much just kick back and, yes, pay attention, but, you know, kind of relax my arms and hands. Then when I drove it on a different section of that highway, uh, it like was never telling me to put my hands on the wheel. And it's because I think it was much straighter. Uh, what happens though, is there are these times when you activate the system, which is one of the things I love about it. It's super easy to activate. You hit the cruise control button and it's on. And, and we can also get into the fact that you can give driver collaboration. I know Jake is big on that. And you can, meaning you can add steering without the system immediately shutting off, which is what Super Cruise does and Tesla Autopilot does. They turn off and then you have to, you know, it's not like it's a big deal, but you have to reactivate the system. This one, if you got to make a lane change, you do the lane change, or if you just have to maybe avoid a pothole, you can do that. The system doesn't turn off. As soon as, you know, you're straight again, it tells you the blue, uh, the blue cruise thing comes back on with hands free, tells you hands free, and you can let your hands back off. But there were times where I wanted it to re-engage. I thought it should do uh, hands free. Either I turned it on and the cruise control came on, but the steering, the hands free part didn't come on for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, sometimes a couple of minutes. Mostly it's because it was in a slightly curvy section, but I wish it would tell you because you don't know, am I doing something wrong? Am I not centered enough in the middle of the road? So I really think it's so much about expectations. What does the owner, what does the buyer think? I could see people being a little turned off about, you know, well, why is it, why does it keep telling me to put my hands on the wheel? But I also see where Jake is coming from. It's going to help you in those boring sections when it's going straight. And when it, when you're in a curvier section, it's, it's actually can handle, it's not saying it's not turning off. It's just saying you have to have your hands on the wheel. Correct, Jake? Yeah. I'm, look, look, Mike, I, you nailed it. It's about expectations. And going into this, I think we all had the wrong expectations, hands-free system. And you get in this expectation. It's like, Hey, let's see how much you could do. Let's see how long I could go with my hands off the wheel. Well, that's a game. That's not actually helping you drive. When you shift the expectations and saying, it's not a hands-free system. It's a system that you put your hands on the wheel and you look where you're going. And there are some sections when it's boring that you could take your hands off the wheel if you wanted to. Once you switch that expectations, now it's a whole different experience. What, what I am upset about with it though, is that it is that it is quite the literal and figurative handoffs is those transitions where it says, put your hands on the wheel, put your hands off the wheel, Simon says, et cetera. <laughs> it, 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 what I don't like about that is, is that I don't immediately know whether it's telling me to put my hands on the wheel because the car is no longer going to steer for itself or because right. it just wants my hands there. So, it's right. just a little, you know, it's a little backup. And, and as someone who is prone to be a little bit of a nervous driver with anyone else behind the wheel, and I'm not quite <laughs> sure uh, how it operates and how it's making decisions. Going into, you know, a curve at 75 miles an hour is not when I want to find out, if, if, do I need to steer or not? Is the car steering for me? So I, I, I think that, that 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 messaging on that screen has to be, you know, driver control or put hands, you know, put hands on wheel, just in a way that that that, that shows that the car is still going to do the work. Because I lost that confidence every time it told me to put the hands on the wheel. Well, let me let me let me let me kind of take it one step further. I almost feel like this is a terrific system that is explained poorly. Because if your takeaway when it says hands free is you're supposed to take your hands off the wheel, I think they have failed. Because no car should be telling you to take your hands off the wheel. <laughs> It is one thing to say you could have your hands off the wheel and it's not going to go give you a nanny if your hands aren't, you know, I mean, again, if you're doing something, whatever. But the way I've driven this car is even when it says I could take my hands off the wheel, I kept my hands on the wheel. There's no reason to take my hands mm -hmm. off the wheel because, again, like if you drive a Tesla or something, if you have your hands on the wheel or you drive Super Cruise, if you have your hands on the wheel, you might accidentally turn the thing off. There's no danger of this. You could keep your hands on the wheel even on the hands off the wheel is allowed state. 
And it's actually an enjoyable driving experience because you could sit there and say, okay, I want to be on this side of the road or I want to give some extra room to that truck. And it's just the way it's marketing. And it's, and, 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 and here's the final kind of piece of this that I think is the biggest takeaway. If you're looking for a self-driving car or you're looking for something that's going to be able to do all these things autonomously or by itself, you're going to be very unhappy with the system. That's not what this is about at all. Be- because of this, this possible confusion, we spoke to Ford uh, about uh, the customer's understanding of Blue Cruise, its capabilities, and, and how it communicates that uh, while actively using the system. And uh, they, they told us they choose very carefully what to show drivers uh, in terms of messaging on the instrument cluster. But they also acknowledge that they've been listening to feedback from customers and are looking at a future enhancement to the system. Uh, and to further help their customers understand the nuances of Blue Cruise, Ford says they are developing how-to videos uh, on the system as well. Yeah. So, I mean, it, here's here's a number. About 50% of new cars now offer systems like this that can steer, that could follow the road, that could do speed control. Very few of them, almost none of them, have a good way of keeping you engaged while it's doing that because it's hard to pay attention. This, now we've talked about Super Cruise and there's a reason why we say Super Cruise is the best system is because it helps keep you engaged. It lets you know if your eyes are drifting off that road. Yeah, there's um, those infrared cameras that right. are, in this car, there's that camera, the infrared camera, right behind the steering wheel. Yep. And and we, tr- we tried it out on this. I mean, it's not intrusive. Yeah. It's not like, you know, you're changing the radio and it's going to go to set off the alarms. But if you, if you do, you know, and we, we, we tried this on our track, we've got lines on our track and closed area and it, it's, there's safety standing by. And if you go and you look at your phone or do something else, it's going to alert you um, until you, it's going to tell you, look on the road. If you cover up those can the, the camera um, immediately, it'll, it'll let you know, it'll alert you. And if you don't, yeah, it's like under five seconds that it gives you. And if you think about it, if you're driving on the highway, five seconds is a long time. Five yeah. I, and I think that's the problem. Like if you, so it's about four seconds. If you make it much shorter than that, now it might be, uh, giving you notices all the time, right? So they, they, do, they do have to walk that fine line of, if Jake said it's not intrusive, which it's not, if you make it like three seconds, two, three seconds, well, now it's gonna be telling you all the time, look at the road, look at the road. You know what I mean? Like, right. even if you were just changing the radio <clears throat> station or, or checking your mirrors, I mean, we should all be checking our side mirrors and our rear view mirror, you know, uh, quite often. So, so what it does is, is, I mean, it has the potential of actually making driver safety, have, making driving safer, and that is, different from some of these other systems, which are a nice convenience. If you're using the system and it is monitoring, making sure you're not, you know, getting into your emails or Facebook or whatever the heck it is, it can make driving safety safer. And it is pretty clever. I, I will say this. I mean, again, we haven't fully tested it, but what I have noticed is that with um, Super Cruise, you can go, if you're not looking and you look quickly and look back down, it, you could do that quick enough and it'll actually, okay. It's like, okay, you looked, you just looked. Well, that's not enough. If you just look for a second, you can't actually figure out what's going on. If you do this with this system, you look quickly up and look back down, it's going to alert you right away. So it wants you to look, it wants you to engage, figure out what's going on, the cars around you. This is this is really the next step. The other interesting thing about it is if you don't respond, say you, you've fallen asleep, say you're on a really boring drive and the car is, is trying to do some work for you and you just... You know, you, you you close your eyes and you're asleep. Um, what the car will do after an escalating series of warnings is it'll kind of tap the brakes a little bit. So it'll, it'll jolt you. And um, it's, it is alarming. Um, I, I experienced that intentionally. I, you know, on, on our track, you know, covered over the camera and, uh, and drove with it. And, you know, it was beep, 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 beep. beep. And then all of a sudden it felt like someone, you know, shook me uh, and and it would, I, I imagine I, I wasn't asleep, but uh, <laughs> imagine if I was, uh, that would be a hard one to it, test. It, it's, uh, it's like, a, but, uh, <laughs> it's smacking you. It's like, wake up, yeah, Steve. come on, exactly. come on. Pay, it, I mean, we've seen it, things like this before. Nissan does this yeah. too, if your hands mm-hmm. are off the wheel. But what you're talking about is a situation where you may fall asleep, your hands might be still be resting on the wheel and other cars will not do this. Even if your hands are on the wheel, It'll still do that. So you can fall asleep, hands resting on the wheel. It's going to alert you. It's going to try to wake you up. And if not, you know, it'll yeah, stop the, driver the car. Monitor, 
I, yeah, the driver monitoring system on this is is is. I mean, I can't wait until we can do some you know true evaluations with it when we get our own when we get this yep. uh, this system and an over the air update on our own vehicle when they when they w- wake our car up to get Blue Cruise because the driver monitoring system seems to be uh, real good. But as I mean, as far I want to go back to that original point you made, Jake. What is the benefit of this over just say adaptive cruise control and and lane keeping assistance well, um well, you, which which doesn't give uh, which uh, lesser versions of it which don't take over and uh, encourage the driver to become complacent so 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 first of all you nailed it keith what what is the benefit of this over adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assistance nothing because that's what it is yeah that is all yeah it systems, combines those two all these it, systems are just those mm-hmm. and you know what I mean, we have surveys. We ask people, do you like your adaptive cruise control? People say, yes. Do you like these systems? Yes. We do not have people say, I like it because I could use my phone. That's not the point but of it. The point is, I get actually, more stressed out monitoring a car than I get driving the darn thing. You mean, it, it, am, you am, get, I, am I different? Am you, I built different? <laughs> Keith, you mean you get more stressed out by the alerts that happen every once in a while telling you to do this or do that? Is that what you're talking about? No, I get more stressed up coming up, uh, you know, across, a, you know, next to a, a line of, of of tractor trailers on 95 and and thinking, you know, is that is, is that is that truck going to merge without looking? So the difference is here is about collaborative driving. So mm-hmm. if you're going in saying, I'm going to watch what it's doing and I hope it's OK with those trucks, that is stressful. If you could say, I'm driving along and it's helping me when I need it, but I could pick every any lane I want. That's a different experience. So I think it's just, you know, to each their own. But it's like it can right. be helpful in those when the trucks aren't there. When the trucks are there, you take control and don't wait for it to tell you to put your hands on the wheel. It's about working mm-hmm. with the system to make driving easier. So it's going to take Can time I- and, and, and us to adjust and understand these systems. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on stop and go. I guess maybe I'll just have to uh, spend a little more time with that collaborative driving. So uh, there's more online about some of these other systems we've tested. And as soon as our own Maki gets its software update, isn't that cool that you can get a feature sent to your car these days? And this isn't just Ford or Tesla. This is so many manufacturers are doing this. Um, as soon as ours gets that, we're going to do some real tests on it with Jake and Kelly uh, and Jensen at the track and, and have some, uh, some more harder data on it. So I think that that covers it, I think, about Blue Cruise for now. Um, but if you want to be on Talking Cars, you can send us a question, a video question at TalkingCars at iCloud.com. It doesn't have to be a video question, but we really like video questions. And, uh, here's one right now. Hey, guys, I'm Bill from St. Louis. My wife and I have a 2015 Subaru Forester with low mileage on it, and we've loved this car ever since we got it. The problem is that we unfortunately have to get rid of it. We have a two-year-old child and we're expecting twins in April, which means that we have to upgrade to a larger car. My question for you is, what would you recommend we look into? It doesn't matter if it's new or used. We just need your input. Thanks. All right, Bill from St. Louis, you love your Forester. You've got twins on the way. You're open to literally anything. This is a great question. Um, let's see. Monty, what do you think? So, uh, you know, he said he liked his Forester a lot. So my initial thought was, OK, well, step up to the next bigger thing in the super lineup, the Ascent. But uh, I personally don't like the way the Ascent handles. It's uh, kind of has vague steering, just really doesn't. It's not that great of a handling vehicle. And. The reliability wasn't good for 2019 and 2020 uh, and only average for 2021. So I would probably steer clear of that. You can't really go wrong with a Kia Telluride or Hyundai Palisade, Palisade if you can find them. I mean, they have mm-hmm. great powertrains um, and, you know, really nicely done interiors with lots of features. But let's just say Bill, you know, likes driving for the sake of driving. I might steer him, you know, Ooh. toward a... Uh, <laughs> Collaborative steering, Jake. Um, yeah, yep. I might steer him toward a Mazda CX-9 because this is uh, a three-row SUV that handles pretty well among three-row SUVs and has a really nice turbo four-cylinder engine and uh, pretty darn good reliability for the last three years. So I, I might steer him that way. That's um, 
that's some that's some good collaborative steering. Jake, Thank what you. do you think? I'm going to tell everyone why Mike's wrong. And As, so this is just this is why I wanted, we, wanted to go after Jake. Yeah, we sh- <laughs> we're going to start having a segment where Jake's where Jake just says this is why Mike's wrong. It's going to be this, this is, is why, why Mike's, Mike's wrong. wrong. It's yeah. it's my my whole show actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So so here's the thing. Um. Consumer Reports is one of the few places that our entire way of of existing isn't selling cars, and that's why you'll hear us say things like "Don't buy a car," and I'm going to tell the hell you, "Don't buy a car. Keep your Forester." And the way you could do is, is you could have three car seats across. The Forester is not a small vehicle. And actually, if you look at our our child seat um, uh, recommendations, uh, you'll see see things like the the Kiko KeyFit. This is a very narrow um, child seat. You can put three across in the Forester. There's still plenty of room back there. And and here's the thing to keep in mind: right now is like one of the worst times ever to buy a car. So don't feel like you have to go rush out. I mean, Mike, my, 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 you were right. I mean, the, the Kia Telluride is a terrific car. But you know what? You don't want to wait four months and pay over sticker right now to get that vehicle. So I would say hold on to your Forester. You can make it work. Um, the kids will fit. Yeah. And I agree with Jake. Uh, but, but, oh, but, Keith, don't no, take no, the easy way it's out. It's a first. It's a first. But, <laughs> no, but I, I have to say, you wouldn't be asking us this. I don't think Bill would be asking us this question if there weren't a new car in that family's future. So I'm I'm going to assume that there is something about, you know, that there has been a, a family decision that, you know, kids come with a lot of stuff these That's days, true. I guess. So it's. You know, so it, you, it, it might it might not all fit. Who knows? Maybe there's a dog. Maybe there's whatever. Maybe they're just bored of the Forester. Um, but I say don't fear the minivan. There's an incredible crop of new minivans out there right now. Um, I personally, I, I think if you if, if you had a Subaru Forester, you probably liked the fact it was all wheel drive. Um, there is an all wheel drive hybrid Toyota Sienna now out there. Um, and it's, you know, something you should you should at least check out. And again, the Telluride and the Palisade are such great vehicles. But when you look at our articles online that say, you know, the cars that are the worst values right now, and this gets updated every couple of weeks, it's always we haven't had to change the picture on the top of that article for like a year because it's, you know, 10 percent over MSRP, 15 percent over MSRP. Um, And, you know, that's that's the problem with buying that car that everyone else wants. So, yeah, if you have to buy a new car. Yeah, maybe look at some look at some of the the kind of the, the oddballs. Look at a minivan, which isn't as you know, it, it's it's not as in demand right now. So no matter where those three kids are sitting, good luck to you, Bill, and to the rest of your family. And if you have a question for us, send it to talkingcars at iCloud.com. It's about all the time we have. So thank you so much for talking cars with us this week. We'll talk again soon. 